Okay, some breaking news this morning. Yeah. Oh my God. If only we had some. The to gods. Talk to. The gods are with us. <laughs> we happened to have one of my sheroes, Representative Jackie Spear, with us this very morning, who's been talking about this issue among many others. Um, good morning, my shero. <laughs> good morning, Stephanie. Great to be with you. <laughs> Great to be with you too. I, you know, well, I just have to say, I was a fan of yours a thousand years ago, but it just, you know, as the country moves through these horrible. Uh, gun massacres you know you speaking about your experience at, at, at jonestown and, and uh you know and then you, you you know you bravely talking about your abortion when this whole roe v wade uh travesty happened it's just you empower so many women every day and i, I just want you to know that that we are just so proud of you in california you, you are an amazing representative well thank you that's that means a lot coming from you um it i just i do my job right um i I represent people and not political um, extremists. And that's what the Republican has become. Uh, It represents political extremists. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, got to get your first reaction to the president saying this. You know, I mean, I know we're still at the same, you know, problem with this filibuster. But, you know, I do think that if, if, you know, Joe Manchin or whoever is going to say, you know, I was lied to by these Supreme Court justices who, you know, that we put on a lifetime seat, then do something about it. Exactly. Do something about it, it to codify Roe, right? It is, this is, this is an easy ask. And for Joe Manchin, for Susan Collins, uh, who were betrayed. I mean, Susan Collins has notes from her conversations with Kavanaugh, who says, I'm not a rope, rock the boat jurist. And it's 40 years of precedent. And then, you know, Gorsuch and, and Kavanaugh, and I believe Comey Barrett as well, all saying that, you know, Roe versus Wade is settled law. It's decades and decades of precedent. Well, um, you can create a narrow waiver for the purposes of passing Roe into law. Uh, because ostensibly, that's what Susan Collins and Joe Manchin um, are concerned about. So at least Susan Collins, I can't speak for Joe Manchin, but um, we, the, we have to remember that the filibuster is not sacrosanct. It's not in the Constitution. It was a rule created in the 20th century, and frankly, it was amended a number of times in the 20th century. It used to be that you had to sit on the floor or stand on the floor and speak for 20 hours. Now all you have to do is put a hold on a bill, and it creates an environment so that you you need 60 votes. It's no longer majority rules in the Senate. And it has become paralysis, total paralysis. We can't get anything passed in the Senate once we pass it in the House unless it gets put into an omnibus bill, which is a, a mega bill that's got a lot of different issues in it. So, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, you, and, right. Yeah, and you had said yesterday was a dark day, but there's a path forward. We must elect two more pro-choice senators willing to blow up the filibuster to codify Roe. I mean, again, I don't want to get happy in June, but obviously Senator Warnock is up 10 points now in Georgia. Thank God. Um, you know, Fetterman's looking very good. I mean, we it's very doable. But I keep saying I think we have to do all of the above by any means necessary. So put the pressure on now about the filibuster. If we can't get it done, get enough senators in so we can, right? One step at a time. That's right. And, you know, this is... This is is so extreme as to not be believed. This is the first time in the history of our country that a right has been taken away. And it's been taken away um, from women in this country. It's like putting us, it's like taking our voting rights away. I mean, it's it's that significant. I said, um, you might have noticed that yesterday, Missouri uh, just announced one of their biggest hospitals, 165 satellite uh, facilities they're not offering emergency contraception anymore yeah so you can see how this erosion is going to become you know a landslide in short order you said something you know again i keep saying we have to by any means necessary help as many women as we can now (laughs) filibuster on and not get enough senators in i mean one step at a time here but you said roe may be dead but medication abortion used by 54 percent of women who have abortions is fda approved safe and effective no clinic no waiting past the word that's going to be the next front in this battle talk to us about that a little Right. So most people don't appreciate that the morning after pill is not medication abortion. The morning after pill is something you can take when you've had unprotected sex as a a means of of making sure 
that um, there is no implantation. Um, the medication abortion is one that can be taken up to 12, maybe 11 to 12 weeks um, after you have been um, impregnated and it, in which the um, actual you know, embryo is on the side of the wall of your uterus. So yes, it's, it's, it's what we didn't have in the 70s. Um, it's what we do have today because of technology and advancements in pharmacology. And it is um, FDA approved since 2000, it's mifepristone. You take one pill to stop the growth of the egg, and then you take another pill to have it shed um, the yeah. egg. So, um, yes, it, it's it, it's going it's it's going to be the next. Uh, well, it's it's considered abortion, so that right. is part of what is being banned. And Republicans, make no mistake, are trying to come for all of it. They're going to try to make sure women can't get that. They can't cross state lines. I mean, you know, as you said, today's Supreme Court decision is about ensuring women will never be equal. The Supreme Court has become an extreme weapon of the far right. I mean, we're going to have to fight on every front, aren't we? Well, we are. And and that's what's so, you know, it really takes my breath away to think that the Supreme Court now is in total control of the Federalist Society, which is, you know, basically the most extreme part. It's not even the Republican Party anymore. It, it is, it is something fairly diabolical. They, they really want to take women back to being uh, chattel, and that is where we're headed, because we do know that, you know, 54 percent or 59 percent of the women who actually get an abortion are already mothers. Yeah, they're mothers, yeah. and they want to make sure they can take care of the kids they have. Now, the Republicans are pro-birth, but they are not pro-life. Yeah. They're not about making sure that, that those kids in low-income families um, have food on the table or school lunch programs or any of the things that will sustain them. Um, they just want to make sure they're born. You know, your bravery on the House floor, as I said, was so inspirational. It, but even on Twitter, you, just such a great point. You said, my abortion saved my life. It allowed me to have another child, dedicate myself to public service. Most importantly, it was my decision. I'll never stop fighting for the one in four women who have an abortion. I mean, that's why this is such political earthquake. That number right there, one in four women. I mean, you know. This you, know is, you know, it's really interesting, Stephanie. I have had personal friends who I've known for decades who have never told me that they had an abortion and now are speaking about it. Because it was, you know, it was so suppressed in most people's worlds that they were, um, they were ashamed about it. Yeah. You know, what drives me crazy on this issue is that we don't talk about the impregnator at all. Yeah. I was saying you had that great idea about, you know, the impregnator should have to put up a $350,000 bond to make sure right. the child is taken care of. I mean, that's for right. life. Yeah. It takes two, you know? Yeah. It's not immaculate conception. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gay, and even I understand that. Now, <laughs> um, you know, you all, you made another great point just about the midterms. I'm sure you've seen, not to get happy, but there's been a 10-point swing toward Democrats just in the last few weeks. I, it will, and we'll get to January 6th in a minute. I think that's having a much bigger impact than people imagine. But I think Roe is, you just said we must make our voices heard this November, like our lives and the lives of our daughters and granddaughters depend on it because they do. And I think that is really going to hyper power November, don't you? I mean, it, it, this is, you cannot go against what vast majorities of the American people want. I, I, I think we, we can't have minority rule forever. And I think what's interesting about this issue, polling shows that it's young men who are more uh, committed to uh, protecting Roe than even women. Yeah. Because they, I guess in some respects they appreciate the ramifications. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, child support starts at what, what percentage of your paycheck? I mean, this is yeah. not just a women's issue. I keep saying it, too. This is not a women's issue. This is everybody's issue. Um, let's talk about young woman. woman, woman. You said Cassidy Hussigen. Hutchison, age 26, former aide to Mark Meadows, has more integrity, courage, and devotion to the Constitution than all the clowns known as the president's men combined. Um, that is really, I, I don't know your reaction, but even knowing as much as we know, I've been shocked by, by these hearings thus far. What, what is your reaction? Oh, they've been powerful, potent, um, and extremely well done. I mean, there hasn't been grandstanding. Uh, it, they've actually been uh, choreographed. 
extremely well. And unlike most hearings, most hearings turn into, you know, mud slinging and um, pontificating by members. This has not been the case at all. And it's um, it's been very um, significant in that it's telling a story very uh, demonstrably. They tell you at the beginning of the hearing what you're going to hear during the hearing. They tell you at the end of the hearing what you've heard. And they already tip you off to what they're going to do next. And I think the obstruction of justice is going to play heavy in the next hearing because it appears that uh, Donald Trump has said his minions to people to tell them to shut up. And uh, that, and, of course, is obstructing justice. And Congresswoman, I can't, you know, I thought of you again because you talked about this on January 6th or the shortly thereafter, your trauma having been through a gun massacre and now learning that they were armed and Trump knew they were armed and aimed them at you and the, the other Congress people and the Capitol. I mean, you know, yeah, this could have gone so bad. Uh, we could have had, you know, truly a massacre in the U.S. Capitol. It it was that close. And lying on the floor in the gallery of the House when that gunshot rang out, I really thought it was over. Yeah. I just, there was this sense of resignation. And I remember just placing my cheek on the the cold floor and thinking, I didn't die in Guyana. I didn't die in this foreign country. I'm going to die in what we call this tabernacle of democracy. It was, um, I, I can't begin to tell you how, how frightening it was. Yeah, no, I, I can't imagine your trauma having been a member that has been through it already. I mean, I... Ah, oh, you said you tweeted former General Michael Flynn pled the fifth when asked and he believed if he believed in the transfer, tr- peaceful transfer of power. You said, mind you, taxpayers are paying one hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year for his pension. Why is he not being called back up and court martialed at the very I, least? I, I'm thrilled that you actually read my. Oh, my, my God, I read all of them. <laughs> but this is what's really interesting. Once you're a general, you could be called back into service at any time. Yeah. So you are expected to follow what's called the Uniform Code of Military Justice and obviously yeah. comply with the Constitution of the United States. Here is Michael Flynn, a, a two-star general, I believe, um, who said under oath that he was pleading the fifth as to whether or not he believed in a peaceful transfer of power in the United States. We as taxpayers pay a minimum of $160,000 a year in his pension. He shouldn't get a pension from no. the taxpayer. No longer someone who has taken an oath and will actually live by it. Yeah, this is a seditious conspiracy against the United States of America. And I, I also like your tweets because they're funny. You just said, I'll never look at ketchup the same way. Um, <laughs> just, the fact that there was as much talk about the 25th Amendment means Congresswoman, they know he's a dangerous lunatic that has no business with the nuclear launch codes. And I, I just, I don't feel like Merrick Garland has a choice, as many, you know, people have said who are even on the committee, on the January 6th committee, but to indict Donald Trump and to prosecute to the fullest attempt, uh, fullest uh, extent of the law. What is your take thus far on what we've seen? So Merrick Garland is a judge. He's He, you know, comes to the job as prosecutor from having been a judge. Yeah. So he is going to be meticulous in case. And for those that think he's moving too slow, I mean, these kinds of cases take time. And when we get word that he has just gotten a search warrant to um, check out Clark's um, home, and he was the one who was part of the conspiracy, um, and was a, he was a deputy AG on the environment. And President Trump was about to make him the acting attorney general of this country. Uh, be calling the former president, a lunatic, is, is not going too far. Um, but he's just recently has um, gone to Eastman's phone and gotten a search warrant yeah. to allow them to unlock that phone uh, by using facial yeah. recognition. So, yes, I think that he's building the case. And there has never been a stronger case, in my view. Yeah, I agree. Um, Congresswoman, always such an honor, honestly. Please come back uh, more, more often, if I'm not too creepy. Oh. <laughs> I would love to do in, in my adoration of you okay <laughs> thanks Scott. representative jackie spear of the great state of california thank you so much 